So, I got this big sta- I don't know why I acted like that was a heavy pile or something. It's not heavy at all, but I got this stack of games. Not only is this a stack of games, this is a stack of PlayStation 3 exclusive games. Now, again, I don't know if I've been doing anything else with my life other than playing PlayStation 3 lately. In the last video, I was talking about specific PlayStation 3 games that were still amazing this with this long after they've been released. Basically, forever after they've been released, they are still good. This one is kind of narrowing it down to specific PlayStation 3 exclusives. I just saw my spit flying through the air when I said that. I have eight games here. Eight games that I've been playing very frequently. Very, very often I've been playing these games. I've probably played them for many hours each one. Some way more than other ones because this is basically just going to describe if some of these are basically outdated or if they're still amazing. Because every video or what every game I talked about in the last video, every game that I played was amazing. But this is kind of at the point now where it's kind of getting where where, you know, some might not be as good as they once were. Maybe they were good in 2007 and maybe now they're not that good. Hello, welcome to another video of a damn large hermit sitting in this chair because this is what this is and let's begin. I have played, a, I said that, I've played a lot of games lately but the very first one I wanted to get my hands on again was Resistance Fall of Man and this thing, I'm telling you right now, the first one has so much nostalgia around it. This was basically the PlayStation 3 launch title selling point. This was probably the very first PlayStation 3 exclusive game that I've played. It wasn't the first PS3 game I played. It was probably, I think it was the second. I don't know why I'm out of breath sitting here. That's just very scary. It's still good. I would probably say that if it was going to be out of a 10 rating or something, I'd probably give it around a 7.5. Or no, I'd give it an 8. I'd probably say like 8 out of 10. I don't, actually, I don't even know if I should be ranking these. This is just, it's still good, but it's, it's not the greatest game ever. It's not like going back and playing GTA 4 or something. The story is still, in my opinion, very intriguing. It's very interesting. I used to think this game was kind of scary for some reason. I don't know. I just, the one mission where you were kind of in the Chimera Fortress and you were just getting jumped on by a bunch of scary creatures was very terrifying to me at a young age. Now it's just like whatever and you deal with it because everything at this point in life is scary. So what is scary in a video game anymore, right? There is still online for this game too, I guess. I didn't, or I wasn't able to play online because I think you have to kind of change your IP address around for this game from what I've seen. Some of them I know even if you do change some settings around, I don't even know if there's a high population of people on the game or something, but I remember playing this online a bit. I think I was terrible at it when I played it back in the day, but I mean, I don't know, it's kind of expected, but it wasn't It wasn't like Call of Duty or something where, you know, you'd be running around quick scoping everybody. Anyway, Resistance 1, I would say is, you know, I, I, I would play this game and enjoy it still, and I did when I... I did enjoy it when I did play, so I mean, I'm not, I don't regret getting this game. This is a lot of, uh, I need to sneeze. I should have said this before this even began, before I started listing off the games that I was going to mention in this video. I have not played some of these games before, which is kind of embarrassing, and I don't know what I was doing with my life, but I mean... I don't know. I have never played God of War 3 up until two days ago or something like that. I have played God of War games in the past, but I haven't played this one. I don't know what I was doing, but I mean, this was also, again, around the time where I feel like I was just only playing specific games. So from what I've played of this game so far, which is a couple of hours, I have definitely enjoyed it very, very much. Very different experience playing God of War, I feel like. It's just, you know, you, you know exactly what game you're playing. I don't know if that makes any sense. I just feel like I do a bad job job of explaining what this game is even about because I'm, I'm gonna be honest I haven't played that much God of War in my life I'm not the largest God of War experience player or anything so I'm not gonna sit here and act like I know a lot about this game from what I've played I like I think this is one of the highest rating PlayStation 3 games too so this is why I wanted to see what it was all about this is why I've enjoyed playing PS3 again so much there's been so many games that I haven't really experienced on the system one again I'm going to mention in a couple minutes probably that I've never played before and I don't know if I've ever enjoyed anything more, but I just haven't experienced a lot of PlayStation 3 exclusives back in the day and now I'm doing that. But God of War 3, 
thumbs up. I probably need to actually finish playing the game before I get a better idea about what's going on and everything. So that's probably, probably would have been a good idea to wait. I mean, there's so many good PlayStation 3 games that I've had fun on, not even exclusive wise. One of the very first games I've played on PlayStation 3 as well, this may have been the game I played right after Resistance on PlayStation 3, is the very first MotorStorm. This was the only MotorStorm game that I played. So I know there's, I think there's at least one other MotorStorm game. And this one, I I don't know if I've ever kind of gotten more frustrated playing it, but you know what? I love it. It's almost weird that there's this obsession we all have where we get so angry playing games and then you just you want to keep doing it. It's almost like I enjoy being pissed off, kind of. This game is very frustrating at times because you will be legitimately kicking everybody's ass at certain points and then, of course, something bad will happen and then you just can't do anything about it anymore. Some of these races you'll be in for five, six minutes and then in minute five, somebody will just come and I don't know what that was. Somebody will just come and basically push you off the trail and it's very, very annoying. But I mean, I just love this game. The soundtrack in this game is very, very good too. All the racing games that I used to play growing up, Need for Speed, played a lot of Burnout, played a lot of uh, Gran Turismo at times. It actually reminds me now that I'm here before I get to the end and realize I forgot to say it. I got Gran Turismo 5, but I wasn't able to play it because it wasn't working. I don't know what happened. It was just kind of bricking my PlayStation. I was very scared. I was trying to just play randomly and it wouldn't work. I was just like, whatever, it's not working. I don't want my PlayStation to eliminate this room or something. Just be smoking from the back. So I don't want to try to play this game anymore before something breaks. So this is unfortunate, but I did play Gran Turismo back in the day and everything I played or every game I played was I liked. Despite this game being very difficult at times, it's honestly amazing and I mean this isn't, you know, there's no story to tell or anything. It's basically just you driving on very dirt trails and doing crazy shit basically and just hitting high jumps, driving insane vehicles, causing destruction everywhere you go. I think I mentioned the soundtrack. The soundtrack is insanely good actually. I forgot how good it was. You go back to these games and you remember that the soundtrack was so incredible and that's like wow. How did they do that? It's time to be very honest with everybody, and it's probably going to be embarrassing, but I'm going to say it anyway, because you know what? I'm fine with being embarrassed at this point in my life. The hell with it. I have never in my life played Killzone 2 up until two days ago. This game rules. This game is so damn good. I didn't want to get off this game. Out of every single game that I've played, not even just PlayStation 3 exclusives, every one that I've played on PS3, I think the two games that I've enjoyed the most, actually not I think, I know, the two games I've enjoyed the most, LA Noir, 100%, and Killzone 2. I don't know where I've been, but I remember that this game released around the same time as, of course, Call of Duty when it was in its prime. I was only playing Call of Duty, so it explains kind of why I wasn't able to play Killzone 2 back in the day, but I'm telling you right now, this game is awesome. I didn't even get to experience the multiplayer or anything like that. I have no idea if the servers are still up for this, if there's still an online community or anything, but just from the single player story that I've played, I don't know if I've ever played a first person shooter game that's just been more chaos. So much chaos has happens in this game. It's just loud noises. If you sit there with a headset on, you'll be lucky to walk away without your ears bleeding. It is never for one second boring. Some games might be incredible, and there's certain points in the game that might not be as exciting as other parts. There is not a second in this game that is not fun. For a game that was released in 2009, I think it was, this has to be one of the best looking games that's ever been released at that point. The gameplay feels very unique for every first person shooter I've ever played. It doesn't feel like Call of Duty, doesn't feel like you're playing some knockoff Call of Duty or something. I, 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 I just don't know if I could even contain myself right now because I enjoyed this game so much. I looked at the rating for this game. It says five out of five stars on the box. So I was like, all right, well, what is the rating for other places? This is, I think, a 91 out of 100 on Metacritic. That is more, I feel like it should be higher. I don't know if, I'm serious. This first, this is amazing. This honestly was, uh, I'm, I don't know, man. I just, I need to go back and finish this. I played probably half the game now and I'm just waiting to go back and play it more because I'm telling you, I don't know if I've, have, have it's been a long time since I've had this much fun playing a first person shooter game other than Call of Duty World at War lately. If online is still up and I'm able to find a lobby or something, holy shit. Anyway, I don't want to keep going on about that because I could go on forever about that game. That is, that's amazing. All right, well, I played Heavenly Sword 2 and I'm not Heavenly Sword 2, the first Heavenly Sword. I just said 
2 after it, but I did play this again. I remember there was a demo back in the day, I think. If I remember correctly, I think there was a demo for Heavenly Sword back... It may have been early 2007 or something where there was a demo for this game and you were able to play maybe the first hour or something. I thought it was fun. This is obviously not, you know, some legendary game that goes down in the history books. I kind of think this game is underrated. It didn't seem like anyone was really talking about this game much, and no one really does. In fact, if I didn't play the demo back in the day, I probably would have had no idea it was even a thing. It almost kind of has a God of War type feeling to it. After playing God of War 3 and then playing Heavenly Sword soon after, it almost felt somewhat similar. Obviously not the story or anything, but just the gameplay wise and the visuals still look very good for a game that was released almost 20 years ago. It was very difficult at times, I must say. There was a couple missions very early in the game where I was just completely struggling with and getting very angry. It's cool to have because this was also one of the very first... I played the demo, so it's not like I played the entire game or something, but this was also one of the first games I played, so just having this is kind of like this nostalgic piece. So basically what I've been saying is I've played some games games and I haven't played some games and I have played Uncharted Drake's Fortune quite a bit back in the day and I love this game back in the day and I still love it. Every single Uncharted game is amazing. I don't know. It just seems like every single one. I don't even think this is one of the best ones in terms of what people like the most, I guess. Uncharted 1 was, you know, was the f well, yeah, I just basically said that in a sentence without saying it, but it's the first one in the series, so it just feels special. Going back and playing this game again, I enjoyed every single moment. It still looks really good for a game that was released in 2007 or around that time, but I mean, it still does look very impressive. The gameplay still feels very smooth, too. It's not, you know, one of those choppy experiences where it's just miserable the whole time or something. I enjoyed this very much. In fact, I pretty much played through the whole story again because, again, I didn't didn't want to get off this game. Uncharted and Killzone 2 were probably the two games I played that I just didn't really want to get off. I mean, I don't know. It's just so much action in this game too. It's almost impossible to not like this because at times you're always in the middle of something. And who honestly doesn't like searching for treasure? Sound like Jack Sparrow over here. I don't know. It's just kind of hard to keep going on about games that are good because it's just obvious that they're good and Uncharted pretty much does everything well in my opinion. So, I mean, let's do it. Or what? Uh, what did I say that for? Alright, I'm gonna be embarrassed again, but I need to say it because I don't want to be a liar. I have never played Metal Gear Solid 4 before up until again two days ago, whatever it was, and you know what? I missed out again. I have never in my life been more ashamed of myself for not playing this game and what was the other one that I said? Oh, God of War 3. God of War 3 and Metal Gear Solid 4. Where was I? What was I doing? I was just trying to get the best kill-death ratio of all time when this game released. So again, this was lost. It was lost in the past of what I just didn't experience, unfortunately. I didn't play much of this game yet. It's not that I didn't want to or something. It's just kind of I didn't have the time, unfortunately. But I'm definitely going to go back and finish this. I really like games that are just kind of, you know, you don't run in and just you know, lose your mind just shooting everybody. Not every game needs to be some run and gun, insanely action packed game where just chaos is ensuing at all times. At least from what I've played so far, it's not like that. Maybe it gets like that later in the game. It's kind of a more stealth approach. And you know what? I love those games. Rainbow Six, all those Tom Clancy games playing at stealth is what I like doing. I don't like trouble. All right. There's more amazing games on PlayStation 3 than there is crusted up Doritos in the mall parking lot because you really can't even just experience every single one apparently. There's so many you can play that I'm just doing everything I can to go back and play as many as I didn't and just all the ones I liked. I'm, I'm serious. Killzone 2 and Uncharted. God of War was also very intriguing to me too. I feel like I need to play more of that game before I get an idea about it and just, you know, I'll probably like it more as the story progresses and shit. But I just, you know, that's just going to happen, hopefully, that I play it again. You know, this is just one of those things where it's like, all right, well, damn. All right. I just, yeah, wow. PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2. There is some PlayStation 2 games that I'm probably going to go back and play as well, because there is some that I've been just dying to play again. 20 years ago, some PlayStation 2 games were amazing, and they probably still are. So there's a couple of PlayStation 2 games. There's more PlayStation 3 games I need to play. I unfortunately didn't play a lot of the good ones, though. I was just, you know, playing 360 a lot, multiplayer-wise. Thank you for watching. This was another video of just, you know, me sitting here and... 
hopefully someone is uh hopefully someone out there is also enjoying games like this on their old school systems because dude anyway thank you for watching this has been another video of a random guy sitting here in front of a table with video games on it talking hope everyone has a good evening and hopefully you know you what the hell was that noise it sounded like there was a rat behind me